This is typically how you would do a tasting um, yes, for Every single, single barrel, barrel products yes. or, or a thing. You would have this lined up in a circle, and every uh, there's tasters on your panel that come in and just yes. taste. This has been watered down, correct? Yes. Yeah, so like one one part to one. So, so basically, we take everything to 40 feet. Yeah. And the reason we do that is so that we can see differences easily. Because mm -hmm. if you were to look at it straight, uh, you'd be burned out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And you can't see differences as easy. So anywhere you travel in the world, whether it be cognac region or uh, the Caribbean for rum or Scotland, they always reduce to see for difference, to look for differences. Right. So this is the best way. It's not the best way to drink. No. And enjoy, but, right. but it's the best way to look for differences as compared to something else, like a standard. And you were saying uh, last time, the like for Blanton's, you would do this for single barrel. Oh, and, definitely. And Elmer T. Lee. Somebody would snows it and then boom, boom, boom. Same with uh, Pappy, the same thing. Yeah. Hundreds of barrels we have. Someone has to do it. It's a tough job. It's really tough. Welcome to Whiskey Topic. I am here with Drew Mabel, the master blender of Sat for the Sazerac Company, really. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're here at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, the heart of Sazerac, I feel, the, uh, where, yes. where all the Around good stuff's you. made. Uh, and we're here. This is pretty much the first day this lab has been opened that we're sitting in here. Uh, Second day. Yesterday you had your party. Yes, we had a big party yesterday, our grand opening with the president of the company. Mm -hmm. And we cut the ribbon. Yeah. And we're ready. We're open for business. What was the cocktail of choice for uh, yesterday's event? I think it was water. Water. Yeah. Wow, we drink sober. all day here. We taste <laughs> every day. So. When you go home, it's time to drink some water is what you're saying. <laughs> when I go home, yeah. that's when we drink bourbon. <laughs> we just taste here. This is really great. So give me a quick walk around here. So you've, you've literally got um, your office is in the corner. Yeah, I'm in the corner there. And over here we have our new product development lab. Mm -hmm. And that's more for the flavoring side of the business. And we have our analytic lab just over here, which mm -hmm. is all the chemistry mm -hmm. that we do on both areas. And here's going to be the whiskey area primarily. And so all your straight spirits basically here. I like that you said this room is a sound proof, uh, at least uh, thing. And you also like the, the ventilation here is Yeah, unique it's carbon enough. filtered and positive pressure. So you always have odors. Odors will stay away because mm -hmm. we're pushing out the pressure. Right. So the carbon, if the carbon filtration also filters the air, so it's going to be scent free. Mm -hmm. But you know, actually right now you smell a little bit, but that's because of the cabinetry is, is still new. new and fresh, but it's gonna, it's gonna degas over time. And mm -hmm. this will be very neutral in terms of sensory. So it'll be a very uh, uh, good for sensory work. And in, in addition to, it's very quiet here. So it's kind of out of the way. And we want that quiet and peace when you're concentrating on tasting. Yeah, and so you've, it's great. You've got your whole team around here. Yes. Um, and uh, so you're saying uh, that we're not just making whiskey here. There's also kind of your, your flavoring. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of flavored products, mm -hmm. uh, you know, flavored brandies, uh, fireball. We do lots of different products, cream products. Mm -hmm. So we keep that a little bit separate from the straight spirit side. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we develop new products all the time. So every every day we're developing new products. And that's our, our biggest challenge. We always talk. I, I I talk about the products that are coming out or out already, and you talk about the products. You're like, oh right, that was like last year where that yeah got constructed. There's a big delay there. <laughs> <laughs> Once you know about it, we've gone on to many different projects. Yeah. And it's then you know when you ask about it, it's oh yeah, that was way back then. Sometimes projects can take a couple years, depending on what you're working on. We work on different uh, products. A lot of them come to fruition, some don't. So, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes one big, you know, bunch of projects. And so when people ask specific questions, it's hard to keep track of everything that we do because there's so many things. And you can't tell me anything you're working on right this moment because it's, like you said, six months. A yeah, year you know, I feel bad about that a little bit mm -hmm. because people would like to know, but it's really, uh, you know, the project may not work out and we may not do it. So I'm telling you about something that may not work out. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, well, let's talk about that. So we, we can talk about uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection because you, you just finished formulating that, the next release. This, this, uh, this, yeah, this current release that will come out in the fall, mm -hmm. uh, just finished, it wrapped it up. So 
It's all approved from a lab blending point of view as far as uh, formulating uh, this year's collection, but it hasn't been dumped and made yet. So. Right. So is it in a vat now or just the barrels are? It, probably in various stages depending on which one, mm -hmm. but some could be dumped already, but I, I doubted it because it's just, I just finished. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, uh, so Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, uh, from my point of view, one of the uh, one of the whiskey geeks love the stuff. Basically, every year there's a different vintage, different proof levels, different different mix of a different vat of barrels. Yes. Uh, but all intended to make certain profiles. There's a, some sort of consistency year to year. Right. Um, the uh, whiskey geeks love the stuff. It's really hard to get. You, you sell it for whatever, a hundred dollars or something like that. Probably less. Uh, probably less. Um, but look, liquor stores typically price it up many hundreds of dollars more. Yeah, we don't really agree with that. Right, and they have a firm stance against that. That's yes, an important thing to mention. Uh, you guys, you release press releases right. against your supply. Well, not your distributors, but the ultimate sellers. It's, a, it's sensitive. Yeah, um, but yeah. we don't. We we could easily raise prices of all these products and make more money, but that's not our objective. Yeah, our objective is to build brands, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing here. Yeah, so I think I think a lot of people appreciate. As a matter of fact, when I first started here about fifteen years ago, I thought our prices were very, very, uh, very good, right. very uh, economical. And I thought that would hurt us because people wouldn't want to taste the product because it's too cheap, it's in inexpensive. Right. So, so I've been proven wrong. Um, <laughs> over time, uh, people have known and grown to love our products and appreciate uh, the price point that we offer on our products. So it could have hurt us, but our products are pretty good in terms of taste. And yeah. I think it's actually helped us now. But the problem is everybody's figured it out. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we're in such low demand for our products, or such high demand, and we don't have enough to supply. Yeah, I, I mean, you look at, you know, Eagle Rare is hard to get. Uh, Blantons, Blantons is sure. really difficult to get. Uh, and these were whiskeys that you could get on the shelves three yes. years ago. Oh, you definitely. could just go, oh, I want some Eagle Rare. Boom, I got it. Uh, and that's not the case anymore. And like you said, I mean, I, I think somewhere uh, there was like Weller, which Weller was supposed to be like the kind of everybody's whiskey. Everybody loves Weller. You're getting a good, good quality whiskey for a good price, and it's nice and and, and wonderful to drink. Uh, and you see, it's selling for 150 bucks. It's a 35 dollar bottle or 15. Sorry, I'm not familiar with U.S. prices as well, but like right. a, a a very affordable bottle of whiskey that sometimes sells for 125 or 150 a bottle. Um, and somebody's making money on it, but it's not, it's not us. Sazerac. No. Yeah. No. We want people to enjoy good quality whiskey mm -hmm. at a reasonable price. And I don't think that strategy has changed since I've been here, even with the success of some of our products like uh, the Antique Collection. Yeah, so let's talk about that because um, someone might argue, well, why don't you just make 10 million bottles of George T. Stagg and, and just... Well, they would argue that. So tell us they do. Tell it, they do. Of course, you hear it every day. Um, what's um, tell us what goes into kind of George T. Stag and, and the rest of the antique collection, uh, and why that isn't a product that can be, you know, oh, mass produced that uh, way. Probably the biggest reason is we start out with a product that's aged around fifteen plus years. Mm -hmm. So, so first of all, you have to age it for fifteen. So if you make uh, a million cases for 15 years from today, what happens if there's no demand for those million cases? Mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of silly because you're wasting a lot of money. So you have to do it responsibly and you have to plan out over those years of that whole aging and profile and because it's quite complex, a George D. Stag. I, I would say that that's the most complex whiskey in the world and it's because of the way we do it. Mm -hmm. It's the way we take different warehouses that give us different taste profiles on different floors that gives us that complexity that you don't get with any other whiskey. And to do that and make more, which we are making more, but it's going to take a long time to reach um, where, we, we, where the demand is, I think. Right. And as a matter of fact, now I guess because you can't get it, makes want, people want it more. Right. So, so it's really, you can't win. It's never going to sit on a shelf no, if somebody no, sees it. it's not going to sit on the shelf. I bet they it. never see the shelf, yeah. most of these products. Yeah. But what I always try to tell people, Mark, is that um, George T. Stagg may be a great product, but the roots is what's important. And mm -hmm. the roots are Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare. So those whiskeys are the same whiskeys, mm -hmm. except they're a little bit younger. 
So they're great quality whiskeys, and you can appreciate those every day with the George T. Stag. You can you know, really appreciate it once in a while because it's very difficult to get. Yeah, this isn't an everyday sipper, no matter what the price point is. You're not going to sit this Yeah, I, I would say that'd be very difficult. Yeah. Unless you actually own a distribution company or something, I guess, or <laughs> a retail right. outlet, you might have a chance at it. Um, every year, it's a different proof point. Uh, yes. So this is, this is uh, the 2017 release uh, at 64.6. And that's just a matter of what the... the pro Depends what barrels I pick. Yeah, yeah. So it's... it's, it's uh, the way I like to design it is... Have no, I know what's available, mm -hmm. and we put it together as like a lab blend, mm -hmm. and based on the individual ingredients, because we look at all the ingredients first and make sure it's it's what I expect. If it doesn't, I wouldn't put them in the lab blend. But what I do though is look at the you know the different areas and the different tastes, such that when you put them together, the overall blend of George T. Stag, once it's married, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. And then I compare that to the previous years because, like you said, it's vintage. So this year is always different. And I think that's what people love about it is it's always a little bit different. Yeah. So I compare that to the last, say, three or four years and sometimes more. And that's why when you see behind me, we have different years of different products because I like to do that and see where it fits in in that range, in my opinion. That must make for a fun day of work tasting vintage uh, antique collection products that are worth. Well, now that you say that, uh, it probably is pretty cool, but I never think about it when I'm doing it. Because you're because, working. Yeah, could, yeah. I don't know if it's called working, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's elements of thinking versus yeah, it's, experiential elements to it. It's it's uh, the expectation is it for it to be good every year, excellent every year. So yeah. there's a lot of pressure there to maintain that excellence. And I think that's the challenge for me, and that's why the thinking goes on, because it has to be excellent. Yeah. And you know, you can't have a second rate product. But based on the history, it's it's won best whiskey in the world several times and uh runner up a lots of times. So it's the expectation in all the antique collection is pretty pretty strong. Yeah, it's pretty intense. And and you're you're so few people get to taste it afterwards, and then there's uh, everybody's very, like you said, it's just obsessed about the flavor of, of it every year. Um, it's wonderful to see people have their favorite vintages and kind of like go back and forth because you, you, I don't think there's a more watched product. Because if you look at like, you know, your the, the Pappy releases, I don't think people are comparing vintages as much. No. But but at the antique collection, people do. They they I've I've had a uh, Weller uh, vertical for three or four, was it three years, four years? I think four year different uh, tastings. And it was wonderful. Like it was wonderful seeing different progressions. They weren't, they didn't taste the same, but you knew we were drinking a similar product. Yes, and, um, and, you know, we all thought, we all loved all of them. And it was like, we all had a little favorite. It's like, I think I like this one a little bit more because of this. I think I like this a little bit more because of that. But they're all excellent. And yeah. so you can't really lose in this game. It's just you you have those, those that's that, the, the vintage. That's the blenders. <laughs> That's right. You're there to drive us. They're all excellent. I like that. Yeah. No, but they were all were. We 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 had this. We were felt felt so lucky to have that tasting. Uh, but also, we we just loved what we loved making notes about what we liked about each one that was a little different than the previous one. I think that was a wonderful part of it. Um, so among the the the, the internet uh, crowd, I'll say uh, this. Well, 27 thing stags done. Uh, people were just going over the moon about it. I think it's. Uh, um, I think every year there's like a favorite that comes out. Uh, so I think, you know, ha Handy Rye maybe two years ago was everybody's kind of favorite. Weller maybe from, uh, William Lou Weller from last year. I think Stag is like kind of the grown has to be the favorite of this year. Uh, any, any thoughts on that? Oh, I think everybody has an opinion. <laughs> I think they're all great. And I think you'll find lots of people who would think something else. One of them is great compared to the oh, other. Oh, totally, totally. You know, it's just, it's just people's taste preference. Yeah. And uh, some people may not like the spiciness of a uh, rye bourbon. They may prefer a Weller because of the nature of uh, the wheat mm -hmm. and the aging of wheat. But I think a lot of people like rye, straight rye. So yeah. I, I think everybody has their own preference because when you read the, the experts talk about each one each year, they all have different opinions. Yeah. So it's really based on a lot of subjectivity. Those whiskey so. reviewers, they're such assholes, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, do you like, like, want me to pour you a drink? Yes. Yes. That's like, nice. Yeah. Um, but the, um, yeah, I think the, it's an interesting part of the job, I'm sure. 
Uh, so tell us, give us a little bit of a preview of this year coming up. Any uh, in, anything in particular that comes out? I guess no, they're all great for one thing. Um, I made the best I could with every single one of them, and uh, I guess the really proof in, is in the pudding when actually they come out and people actually taste them. Thank you. Um, will they be? Will there be any articles released? You know, certain uh, press releases. We didn't have enough barrels of this, so we couldn't. Yeah, there's one surprise there. <laughs> you won't tell me what it is. No, I can't. Uh, oh, I see PR right yeah. over there. They're staring at us. Um, so that's but, like, but it will come out. It will come out. There's always because that's the problem, right? I mean, a couple of years ago, it was like the Pappy Twenty Three was very low, or. or uh, or uh, Eagle Rare was very low because you just didn't have that H stock. There was the, how empty are these barrels once well, you pick them up? <laughs> some of them are pretty empty. As like, a matter of fact, there's nothing in some of them. Right. So right. we can't even sample them. So there's a lot of casualties like that. Yeah. Um, that you didn't expect. So when people ex even at the even at the planning and here at the plant, you expect to have so many barrels. You estimate how much you have. But mm -hmm. so if the evaporation was higher. Or if there was a lot of casualties, like empty barrels, <clears throat> or yeah. something we reject it, then the number goes down that you make. Yeah. And so it all makes a big difference and impact. So if we we're expecting so many cases and you get half as many, a lot of people are going to be disappointed. And a lot of people think that we do this intentionally, like <clears throat> we had, don't have enough for some reason, but mm -hmm. it actually, there isn't enough. Yeah. If yeah. we had more, we'd probably produce it. <laughs> So, um, a stag, uh, how old is the average barrel in this? Probably 15 plus. 15 plus. And we actually have a letter that goes with it, mm -hmm. outlining where the barrels came from on every year, mm -hmm. uh, on every vintage, saying where they came from, what the average age is. But a lot of times, <clears throat> we'll have older, mostly older ones in there. So, mm -hmm. it's, it depends on the year and what's available and what we put into it. Right. So sometimes, if you notice, the proof might be a little bit lower on some uh, years. Mm -hmm. It's because we get probably barrels from the lower, mid to lower parts of some of the warehouses where it's cooler. Right. And then uh, it'll give you a different flavor profile, and uh, we'll mix that with some of the higher ones, and so you get a nice balance. And so, what are you looking for your stag? What's in uh, from a blender's perspective? What is your uh, what is your pref what is your kind of deconstruction in of your face flavor in your face flavor <laughs> <laughs> it, it has to be complex and i insist upon different warehouses and different floors to get that complexity mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of especially if you get 15 plus years you're going to get a lot more of those complex notes <laughs> you may get some more of that chocolate flavor the the leather flavors as compared to say something that's 6 years old Right. So I'm looking for all those attributes, you know, more of the dark fruits, maybe uh, stone fruits like cherry. Right away, you got to get that burst of that sweet fruitiness up front. Warms your cheeks right away. Right. Yeah. And then you see the transition across your tongue. So it, it ends up finishing with that oak uh, dryness, and then the spiciness still sticks around on the tip. So the transition's important when you're looking at any of these products. I think that's why, why you and I get along very well when it comes to whiskey tastings. I'm all about the kind of transition on the palate. I, I, oh, yeah. I very much uh, geek out about that a lot. I think uh, that makes a difference between a, you know, like a good whiskey and a great whiskey. I think so, too. And, and because it's uncut, unfiltered, you taste the lingering effect of all that. You can actually taste it for several minutes afterwards. Yeah. And even right now, I can still, it's just fabulous, and it just lingers. Oh, and I think that's one of the hallmarks of a great whiskey, too, is that lingering. Yeah, it's, um, you know, like, um, Scott Drinker's always talked about the finish, but with these kind of bourbons, it's just, there's no finish. It's just there. It's there, it's, and it's, it's there. It's almost overwhelming to some people. When yeah. I, I find that the uncut, unfiltered, and the higher proof is almost explosive. It just amplifies the taste of the whiskey so it explodes up. People, mm -hmm. I think they mistake it a little bit for the the high proof, but I I, I just find flavor just yeah. 
just explodes in my power. Yeah, because there's a theory that people, um, you know, I, I can't remember who wrote the article, but said, are, are we becoming proof obsessed? I do, is the reason why I want barrel strength whiskey, because we were obsessed with the proof levels, but I, I don't, I disagree. I think no, I disagree. I mean, some people, everybody's got something, right? So some people may look for that, but I think the flavor you get on a product oh that's not been cut down at all is, is intense. There's, most experts, most connoisseurs of bourbon would say the higher proof is the best. Yeah. It's yeah. just so much more flavor. Yeah. And we get requests all the time to take some of our products up in proof. <laughs> all the time. I bet, I bet. Uh, but on the flip side, not everybody wants a high proof whiskey. Not everybody does. It's not for everybody. You do have to drink your fair bit of bourbon, at least a couple of glasses a, a week, to, to kind of appreciate something of this strength and proof level. Um, but I do find you get the reverse sometimes. You'll get to the point where you'll introduce somebody that's new to whiskey that doesn't really like whiskey, has had it a few times, and then you introduce them to something that's barrel proof and they find their jam. They're like, oh, oh, this is great. This is what I want. Uh, so you kind of get a, you know, different palettes are different and people's experiences are different. Uh, but I do find that's, uh, you know, a great way to go and it just, the flavor sticks, sticks to your tongue. It's funny, when I, when I do tastings, I do a lot of tastings around the world, mm -hmm. and I find that... If you walk people through the different products and you end up with an uncut, unfiltered, they all of a sudden gain appreciation for that type of product. It's amazing yeah. that it's like that. It's like a light switch. Yeah. It's not, it, you don't have to learn to do that. We can actually show you and people can actually go through it and it happens all the time and they just appreciate the flavor then yeah. because you're focused on it as opposed to saying, well, that's harsh. Because some people would drink that and go, oh my goodness, that's harsh. Yeah. But if you go through the process of each bourbon and how it's made and you end up with this, they just love it. Yeah. I find that all the time. So you, so Stag, as we said, not readily available, it's already sold out. Uh, but you do release a product, Stag Junior, uh, that still sells out a fair bit as far as I understand. Yeah, uh, well, we wanted to make that for uh, more regular because stag is once a year so i yeah. think four times a year we release that and uh so this is also a barrel proof product as well right it's the biggest difference is the age yeah so that'll be we target that around eight or nine years mm -hmm. and so you're getting more along the lines of a buffalo trace type product yeah uncut unfiltered right because right these will be the same right same recipes correct it's mash bill number one so without even tasting it, you know that the flavor is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Age really makes the difference. So the complexity you see in the stag will be less, mm -hmm. but spectacular in other ways. And you don't really, the nose is not that spicy. It's no, surprising. It's, not, it's very subtle. And it's yeah. not that string, astringent or anything from yeah. alcohol. But the spirit of stag with that burst of flavor, and the spice and the pepperiness and it's, the it's, sweetness really gets there. It's in the spirit of stag in every except, single way. Except it's, it's more, I think it's balanced more towards the sweetness side, the fruity side. You, it's more predominant across your palate as compared to that one. And I think that's what sticks out to me personally, mm -hmm. but very explosive like stag. But if you can't get stag, I think this is a pretty good second, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to do And that's why well. we call it junior, right? And it still sells out. And this is also a batch. So there's batch numbers associated yes. with every release. Um, and so people also do the same sort of comparisons with, uh, with stag junior between batch numbers, uh, which I think is wonderful. I, I love doing that. And, you know, if you... Uh, it's yeah, more if, accessible. That's the way it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely more accessible. And it's cheaper, too. We sell it for us. It, not very much compared to stay. And it's not uplifted as much on stores either, I think, at least. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, for now. For now, right? You never know. Um, but this is this was a wonderful product when it came out. I think, uh, like I said, in the same spirit as Stag. Um, let's let's switch let's switch that gear a little bit before we uh, think. Let's let's talk about Weller a little bit because you ah. you started us on uh, you started this program here. So tell us a little bit about the Weller craft your own bourbon craft your own perfect bourbon. bourbon. Yeah, I don't know. is that what the P for is yeah. for? Craft your own perfect bourbon. Well, that's a brand new product. Um, I'm not even sure it's out. I think it's out. But uh, it's basically the result of uh, our website that we put out about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we asked people to, through, through a series of steps, uh, determine what they like to, to drink. And out of 100,000 people, this was the final result of what those 100,000 said. This is the perfect bourbon. 
And what it basically turned out to be is a weeded recipe, which is Weller, mm -hmm. aged around eight years, and um, and that's what it uh, basically is. And I think the other thing is people wanted higher proof, so it's a little higher. In proof. Yeah. So you've you've got the typical nose of a Weller. It's soft, slight fruity, some caramel notes, honey, and then when you taste it. Very typical, but a little more oomph behind it because of the proof. I, lo I love the, uh, there's like that that crushed fruit element to it, like the strawberries or cherries or raspberries, kind of that, that fruity it's element. a little more, yeah. Yeah, and that's something that you see in Weller and maybe you would see like in, in some of the Pappy lines, that kind of that, 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 that element is really nice on the nose. Uh, it just really knows it really well. And also when you do taste it, you get more of that oak flavor because of the age. And especially on the finish, a little drier than you would with a normal special reserve. So yeah. it's slightly different, a little bit enhanced, and I think that's why people uh, thought they would like it. And so the reason why you went with Weller, because it's the weeded one No, the, the reason recipe. we went, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, whereas but if that's they, what people prefer, that's what the people weeded prefer. Side, as opposed to a rye bourbon or a straight rye. Makes sense. They get a lot of variety in the bourbon and rye world, right? You've got yeah, your blends, you've got your Buffalo Trade. Like, you don't have as many weeded uh, bourbons out I, there. I think it's because people think they like that softer taste, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably why. I do like the age. I think the, the oak kind of notes kind of through a little nicer. It's a, really, it's a really great product. Yeah, I think people will enjoy it, especially since they voted for it. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> wait. We don't have enough for those people who voted for it, probably. Is it going to be limited release as well? Uh, yeah, I think so. Not not too excessive because first of all, we don't have enough of the wheat recipe for everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's pretty limited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, this is going to do really well. Um, mm. I love the, the that's wonderful. Um, yeah, that's nice. I also like that we poured it and it just opened up the glass really nicely. It kind of really had that opportunity yeah. to breathe, and the nose just became more and more vibrant as as it stood on the glass. Uh, well, you and you know, I've had this talk before. I always say, like, if the bottle's freshly open, you got to give it a little bit more time in the glass just to kind of let it uh, sit. Um, so the last time you were on the podcast, well, wonderful, you brought a sample of the first batch of uh, four grain. I had no idea what you were pouring me, and I drank and I loved it. And literally, as you left, I saw the press release from Buffalo Trace saying, hey, we released four grain, and da-da-da. <laughs> so that was really... And then what happened? <laughs> it's Jim all... Murray rated it the best whiskey in the world. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I just make a note to you mm -hmm. is that that was an experiment. Yeah. So tell us about that. Everything we do here is about making better whiskeys. So yeah. we, I think we make some very good whiskeys. We always want to make better whiskeys. We always want to improve. Mm -hmm. So one of the experiments of the hundreds that we have going on is basically um, that was one of them. And after 12 years, that's what ended up and ended up being the best whiskey in the world. So it kind of, yeah. what we're trying to do is make better whiskeys. And yeah. sure enough, we made a, a better whiskey. No, oh, that's amazing. Isn't that? And I think it justifies our whole rationale in trying to make better whiskeys. Because what we make today is great, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to make better whiskeys for tomorrow. Uh, so it, it's four grain mash bill? Of yeah, that's... Yeah. That's why I want to show you. You got another glass there I can pour you some? Yeah, we'll just... I do a lot of uh, presentations, and so I like to show people that this is a bourbon, 51% mm -hmm. corn minimum. Mm -hmm. We don't talk exactly right. the percentage or the recipe. The second grain that goes into this is wheat, because you could put other grains. Mm -hmm. third grain is rye and the fourth is barley malt mm -hmm. so there's your four grains and so what I like to describe when we look at something like that is it's basically a combination of these so with a rye bourbon you get a lot of spiciness mm -hmm. with a wheated bourbon you get that softness that we just tasted so you put this together and you've got a balance between the two so when you taste when I tell people to taste it you look at those elements of the of the grains that went in it because the corn is traditionally sweeter, fruitier. So you're going to get all these elements into one product. Yeah. So you're really going to get a nice balance. So when you taste it, you taste the softness, you taste the spiciness, and the only way is is to is to nose and to taste it. 
So you can even see the rye is softened by the wheat on the nose. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. But you see the creaminess, mm -hmm. like the Weller we just tasted. Yeah. And then the spiciness comes through. Yeah. You see the benefit of the four grain? Yeah. It's a balance between those two. Yeah. And I think that's what really, really makes this different from the you know any of the whiskeys here that we've tasted. The nose is very unique on this. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, you're, you're going to get kind of get a little of the best elements of every of everything. Yeah. I, I think so, and I think it, I think the spiciness is moderated by the wheat. Mm -hmm. and I think that's what um, these grains do when they're mixed in proportions we mix them at. Which you won't tell me, of course. No. No, <laughs> no that's I'm what- I'm sworn to secrecy. You're sworn to secrecy. Pierre will come after you. Um, the, um, so this, this became immediately a, a, a bestseller, well, bestseller. It sold out, I guess is yeah. better. Yeah, and we, it. we actually had more, so we bottled another round. Okay, and that's what we were, yeah, yeah the second round. Um, but you don't know if this is gonna become a annual release, or is that? Uh, I think eventually. Eventually, <laughs> once you catch It might up. take a few years. This is aged, I think it's around 12 years, so. Yeah, oh wow. That's so nice. it might take a few years. Any chance of Kirito coming back? <laughs> I'm oh, at liberty to say. <laughs> uh, so uh, cured work was a great experiment, though. Let's, let's, uh, that was the one where you had um, uh, oak that was uh, aged longer, seasoned longer uh, outdoors. Uh, yeah, we find that traditionally makes a better whiskey. Mm -hmm. So we've learned from our experiments over the years, and we've uh, we can design what we want to do moving forward, but it's going to take years to see the results. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool when you have the opportunity to do that at a place like this, because it's actually encouraged. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really what <laughs> kind of puts you together here. It's you do have all these wonderful products. And um, warehouse-wise, uh, how many warehouses do you have now? That's hard to determine because we're building one every five months now. Wow. Maybe even less. Um, but. Basically, uh, to keep up with the demand, we have to build a new warehouse uh, every five months. Mm -hmm. And these warehouses are the biggest in Kentucky at 60,000 barrels a warehouse. So we're filling one every six months, or less than six months. Are, are you curious on how the whiskey will age no, at every I'm curious. I'm, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so we're, we're watching it as it ages. It hasn't been that long. Yeah. It'll age differently because it's a different warehouse. Yeah, it's got some over a hill yeah. and in the four, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be a completely different weather element yes. there. Yeah. Yes. So we're watching it. Don't worry. So this is the fun part. This is yeah, you, but it you, may be even spectacular, even more. Right. Right. So we don't know. You have no idea. No. And I, I, I have a my gut feel says it will be better. Well, that's interesting, right? Because what you you know, kind of, you have your sweet pot spots where you go for. Oh stag. yeah, we know that. Yeah. You know where the warehouse is. Now you're gonna have to discover all new set of sweet spots in every in all new warehouses. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's isn't awesome. that the fun part? That sounds amazing. Um, what else? So, um, Buffalo Trace. Uh, I, this is a great place to get tours. I always keep saying that if you're going to Kentucky, come to Buffalo Trace. Uh, you're Thank not you. on, you're not on the official Bourbon Trail list, so that's a good thing to note because um, you know. People might, if they're looking just at the kind of bourbontrail.com, you might miss right. But coming to Buffalo Trace, uh, the tours are free. Yeah, that's probably pretty rare. That things. is pretty rare because you're you're getting, and the only your only challenge is just to book a couple like weeks or or you can get a tour anytime you anytime, want. Anytime, but if you want special tours, you can go online and look at that, so yeah. you can determine which one you want to see. Because there's different tours. I think we have five or six tours, yeah. including a ghost tour. I, I keep telling you about the ghost store. That's uh, that's amazing. It's a fun. I don't believe in ghosts, but I still think it's supposed to no, be fun. No, me too. But I had a lot of fun on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can still have a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. And Freddie Johnson does that one, I assume. Oh yeah, he does it. But there's others who yeah. do it too. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a fun tour. You, you, I would recommend it. Yeah, I always recommend people to come here because it's like I said, it's free. Uh, if you book in advance, you'll get the VIP tour, but you can just come in here and you've got a couple of tours every day that just you could you take probably people. do all five in one day if you plan. Oh, right. that's a nice idea for next ah. time. <laughs> we do have ghosts because even in the lab where we came from, mm -hmm. at nights the technicians would hear glasses. Thinking. Yeah, someone was tasting. <laughs> they, they believe it. <laughs> Somebody probably was tasting. <laughs> probably not a ghost. There was nobody there. Oh. Maybe they found a little closet they're drinking know. out of. Um, so uh, you can't tell me what's coming up next year, uh, but uh, you 
can tell me your excitement for Buffalo Trace antique collection coming out uh, in the fall. Uh, I assume Pappy Van Winkle just kind of came out or is coming out at some point. I don't yeah, even keep track. Yeah, it's coming out. We've, we've tasted it, yes. I've not kept track of it because I'm not going to ever find it at stores, so it doesn't re register on my radar at all. Um, but that's coming out soon. Yes. Uh, you've got your stags coming out, uh, like yep. I said, four times a year. Uh, so four grain, uh, this one's going to be hard to buy when it comes out again. Yeah, it'll be hard to get. Yeah. But I, it, I think it's definitely worth trying to get if you can get it. Would this work at a lower proof point? Is that, uh, sorry, lower age statement? Would you do this as a younger uh, four grain, six year old? It's or, possible, but yeah. uh, yet to be determined. Depends on the taste. It's yeah. not about the, uh, the age, it's more about the taste. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Anything else you want to talk about, Drew? No, I'm good. All right. Well, thank you for coming on uh, and inviting My us pleasure. into this brand new lab, which was wonderful. Yeah, you're the first here. I know. That's really great. It's like, like I said, it looks like the first day of school here. Like, not everything's quite set up. No, it's and it's not. The students are going to come in and be like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, Give us another month. <laughs> it'll be populated. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Drew, for coming on. Hey, pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.